Hello, me again. Tracy's at work, and uh, I wanted to do that video for you all about doing um, cornbread over the fire and uh, baking in a Dutch oven. And uh, I'm really excited that when I my husband posted the video that a lot of people were asking questions and was really interested in the subject. So I'm going to try to. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would love to answer any questions about um, cooking over the fire or 18th century cooking over the fire or um, along those lines, any questions along those lines. I'd love to answer them for you. Um, and uh, in my last video, we also put a link uh, where you can find a tripod. Several people uh, asked me about the tripod. Uh, one person asked me about the tripod and where to get the, uh, themselves one. Um, so, uh, we put, um, links in the last video also. So, um, today, um, I'm making another stew. The, the, veg the hamburger vegetable stew was so good <laughs> that, um, I'm going to make it again today. I've already got the hamburger and the onions going. After I put that all together and get that going, I'm going to go in the house and work on the cornbread. My onions and my ground beef cooking. Have some hot coals already going, and um, and it's really easy to keep the fire going today. Um, not too much, just enough wind to keep the fire alive today. So it's really really nice. And um, next step is adding all the vegetables and the uh, uh, tomato sauce. And uh, I think that's all that stuff. And um, and then my beef broth. And then it will be cooking, and then I'll start on the uh, cornbread.
get it going, your cantlet goes right up. in from tending the fire. Soup's cooking really well. It should be pretty much done. I'll just have to put a lid on it and let it stay warm over the fire till my husband gets home. But I did find a really good recipe in um, Miss Kay's Duck Commander Kitchen in her cookbook. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use hers. It's just a typical cornbread recipe. But um, Except for I'm just going to adapt it for my, my Dutch oven. Now this is a Dutch oven. And it has, um, there's two types of Dutch ovens. There's ones with no legs under them. And those are the ones that you cook over the, on your oven. They cook on your oven. And these are made for cooking over the fire. They have the legs here. Okay. And um, sometimes uh, when pans have legs on them, they'll call them spiders. Or Dutch ovens, uh, just like I call the round thing that I hold my pots up in. I call that a spider also. Um, now this is what makes it a baking Dutch oven. An oven. This is what makes it an oven. This this pan, particular pan I got from, it was my mother's pan. And she, um, my parents were, uh, uh, were antique dealers most of their lives. And they ran across this in an old home a long time ago. I'm estimating it's probably about 200 years old, close to 200, I'm, I'm guessing here, definitely at least 175, close to 200 years old. Um, how you can tell is that, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a line here, right here, and I mean, and there's a line across the bottom of the pot. Those are come from... They would make a mold in sand. It was a sand mold. And that is where they would pour the casting into the, the hot um, cast iron 
the iron into the mold. And when they would break it free, that's what was left of the mold. And um, uh, it's a mold mark. And so, but anyway, so this is a really, really early one. Um, and uh, I really, I cherish it because it was my mother's. And um, since they were antique dealers, they never really used it. But uh, just, this is something you should know. Um, cast iron to keep it um, in good shape. To keep it in good shape, um, you should use it. You should use it. Always use it. Um, using it in the fire, it keeps it from rusting. Um, uh, it just, you're always washing it and oiling it up after you're done using it. I have a skillet that my brother, um, my brother, uh, my brother gave to me. And it's, um, got a really fancy handle on it. And it's really old. It, it has the little legs on it also. But they're short enough legs I can still use it on my stove. And I love that, that skillet. But, um... I was afraid to use it at first, and I thought, oh, this thing's so old, it's got to be from the 1850s, um, uh, 1860s, I'm afraid to use it, and, um, and then my brother told me, no, you should use it, and I did, and um, when I started using it, it kept it cleaner, it kept it in great shape, and it, it doesn't wear out, cast iron doesn't wear out, unless you let it get so hot, it warps and cracks, now then, you can't, there's nothing that you can do for it. Um, a little warpage, you can still use it, um, especially if you're doing it over the fire or on, on a not-so-flat surface. But um, you can still use it. But if it cracks and breaks, I mean, you have to have a really, really hot fire for that to happen. Or, or hot fire and then, like, pour cold water on it. Like, you have it so hot. You have it really, really hot, and then some somehow for some weird reason you'd want to throw hot water on it it would crack it it would it would crack it but anyway so it's always good to keep using your cast iron and um so i'm going to use this today and this is the lip that i was talking about there's a lip around the lids that are used for baking and um so we'll put hot ashes on here hot hot ashes underneath and then it will bake it now I'm going to pour my batter straight into the Dutch oven today. And I'll just keep put a little bit less coals underneath than I will on top. And then this way it doesn't burn on the bottom. But um, but this is a trivet. This is I got this at a reenactment a long time ago. It's, it's, it's one of my favorites. I have a couple other ones, but this one's my favorite. And this was made by a blacksmith at a reenactment I went to. And how they would actually do it, if you're going to make a cake or a pie... Uh, something that you're in that you have it in another pan and you're gonna bake it you put this in first and then you put your pie plate or your cake plate cake pan on top of it and then that'll keep it off the the bottom of the pan and so that it doesn't scorch it or burn it and then also it'll make that the heat will go completely be able to go completely around your pan inside of here and because you're gonna have your ashes on top uh, ash, uh, ashes on the bottom and it'll cook like an oven and um, and, and so that's I just wanted to show you the trivet um, you know keep your pan up off the thing now this recipe calls for um, I'm not going to show you me putting the whole thing together it's, it's just a cornbread recipe but it calls for uh, bacon grease so to cover your bottom of your pan. And now, I was born and raised in the north. I was never, until I married my husband, lived in the south. And so, um, we would have a sweeter cornbread up there. And, um, and really didn't eat it all the time. We more went for biscuits and my mom made a lot of homemade bread and biscuits and things like that to go with dinner. Um, so I never really, I made, I made cornbread bread occasionally, but it was a more sweeter cornbread. My husband likes the southern kind of cornbread. <laughs> he comes from southern Ohio. <laughs> Maybe that's 
what it is. But anyways, he was, uh, uh, he likes the, um, uh, no sugar or no sweetener in it. Um, this one calls for just a, like two tablespoons of sugar. That won't make a difference. Um, I used to put like a two thirds cup of sugar in my recipe. Um, Tasha Tudor, um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of her. Tasha Tudor was an Ill child's book illustrator, but she lived, um, in an old, some, uh, in a house that her, her son built her, but it was a replica of a 1740s home. And so she did everything. She lived very, everything very old fashioned, doing all the old crafts and everything like that. Now she had a cookbook that she put out a while back, uh, a long time ago. She's been dead for a long time now. But um, she made a cookbook a long time ago, and it has, uh, I love her recipe when I'm making my favorite kind of cornbread. Um, but today I'm going to make it because, uh, I want to make it my husband's way because I like pleasing him and I don't want him not to, not want to eat it. So I, me, on the other hand, I'll take a piece of cornbread. If I want it sweet, I'll just put some honey on it. Um, otherwise than that, uh, I'll be fine. But he, he enjoys cornbread and, um, so I'm going to make it his favorite way. So, um, but anyway, so I, I greased it with um, the bacon grease, and next I'm just going to whip it all up together, and before I pour it in, I'll turn it back on again, and then I'll pour it in, and then we'll take it out, and then I'll show you how I cook it over the fire. I got it mixed up. The recipe called for the pan to be hot, so I went and took the Dutch oven out and put it in the hot coals and put some coals on top of it to get it nice and warm. I'm going to take out the batter now, go out and spoon it in. And then we'll get it bacon.
putting it on top. Oh yeah. Really nice. I'm gonna run in and get a lid for the for the soup to keep it nice and warm while I'm waiting for my husband to get home. Um, I might even get another small fire over here going just to make sure I have enough hot ashes going to bake it. I think I do, it's, but it's been so long since I've baked over, um, since I've baked in a Dutch oven. It's been a few years now. Um, I just want to make sure that I have enough. If away from the sides. Yep. It's done. Let's check on this side. Yep, it's done. There it is, all done. I'll take it into the house and cut it open so you can see how nice.